Hello and welcome to my channel. This video is a quick start for beginners in OpenSCAD. If you have any experience in OpenSCAD, this video is not for you. So this video covers the basic primitives, cube, sphere, and cylinder. Um, and then it also covers the modifiers, translate and rotate. And then I'm gonna to try to go into the for loop iterator. And let's see what else I'm thinking. Oh yeah, so we're gonna do a compile and we're gonna learn how to export the STL. So this should get you to the point where you can actually make something to print. If you want more detail on each of these, I have videos that go into excruciating detail on Cube, you know, an eight to 10 minute video, uh, the same on Sphere and Cylinder, as well as Translate. It gives you some uh, different argument formats and some ways to use them. So let's get started. Let's get started by moving to a clean version of this that includes my comments still. So here I have a clean version with my comments, and you could also just do a uh, file new, which will give you a completely blank slate. You don't need to have my comments. Let's start out by looking at the cheat sheet. So this is if you run into any trouble or you need to learn something new. Uh, OpenSCAD has included in the help menu a, a direct link to the cheat sheet on the web, also to the homepage, documentation, and some other things. So you see the cheat sheet, I have it opened a couple of times here. Um, you'll see there are 2D primitives, 3D primitives, and everything, and every other command that you, we would need in OpenSCAD. Um, and behind each one of these links is the manual, the documentation for this. And this is the same thing you would get to if you clicked on documentation here. Okay, so we're going to skip facet number for a second, um, and we're going to do a cube. I leave facet number up here because usually that's defined globally at the top of the page. So let's start out by making a cube. And a cube is generally defined with three values, and it's the X size, the Y size, and the Z size. Now, there are other ways to define a cube, but this is what I've seen as the most commonly used format. To draw the cube in, in your viewport window, you press F5, or you could alternatively click on any of the icons that say preview, this one here, or this one here. So now we have our cube. So now let's go back to facet number. If we do dollar sign FN, that sets our facet numbering. And um, oh, actually, let's wait until we do sphere so it really makes sense. So now let's do a sphere. So let's do sphere um, as soon as I learn how to type. And the sphere in this case is just gonna take one value and that's gonna be its radius. So we're gonna make a giant sphere at radius 10. Now you'll notice the cube's origin is this corner of the cube and it's set to zero, zero. Um, so it's not centered. There is a centering function. I'm not gonna show you that in this video. So the sphere is going to be centered at the very center of the sphere um, about, the, about the origin. So now let's talk about facet numbering. You'll see in this sphere, these are, these are the various facets. We can change facet numbering by doing dollar sign FN equals, and let's say I wanted to reduce the facets to 10. And you'll see that you only have 10 facets and it's per per layer. So there's 10 facets around this layer and 10 around this and 10 around this. Um, and obviously the cube can't have 10 facets or it won't be a cube. So I'm going to leave it to 25, which is what, what we had it to before. And basically you can think of this as resolution. So if we did it as 50, you'd see a prettier cube, a prettier sphere. So maybe we'll leave it for 50 right now. So let's do the cylinder next. To add a cylinder to our model, we use the cylinder command. We're gonna set radius one equal to five and a second radius, radius two, oops, equal to five. And we're gonna set a height equal to 10. We end the command with a semicolon as in is the case with all the commands. And we press F5 and you'll see our cylinder has been drawn, but it's inside the, inside the sphere. One way we can see that it's, uh, get a better look at our cylinder is by adding a percent sign in front of the sphere. And this tells, open SCAD to make the sphere transparent. You'll see the center of our, our, of our cylinder is at the bottom radius, that's this one here, in the center. And that's set to zero, zero, zero on the origin. So that's the uh, basic cylinder and we'll do translate next. The next command we're gonna cover is the translate command, which moves an object in the X, Y, Z uh, coordinate system. So in order to use it, we need an object. So let's copy the cube from up here and I'm just gonna copy and paste. And then we're gonna type in the translate command. And you'll notice I don't need to have a semicolon 
between translate and cube. Translate is a modifier or operation, I'm not sure which is the correct term, that works on its child object cube in this case. So the translate operator uh, receives a vector and we're going to just do, we're going to move the cube 10 units in the x direction. So each of these um, values in the uh, in the array here are uh, units. So it's x10, y0, and z0. So let's draw that. If you're confused about what happened, you can, uh, so what it did was it drew a second cube that's 10 units over. If we make it 11, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. If, you're, if you can't you know, move things around, because that'll mess up your model, and you need to understand it, you can highlight the lot, something that you did by using the pound sign, and that makes it red. Now, it's important to note that the transparency and the red-pink highlighting doesn't change the output of your model. This is, this is just in the viewport. So let's, uh, that's translate, and let's go on to rotate. To use the rotate command, let's copy a cylinder down to rotate. And let's change the height of this to 20 so it's just a little bit more pronounced when we do the rotation. And let's type in the command rotate. So this command will operate on this object. So this is the child of this rotate. And the rotate takes two uh, arguments. We're going to do an angle of 90 and we're going to do a vector argument. And the vector argument uh, determines which axes it's going to rotate around. So we're going to rotate only around the X in this case. We don't need a semicolon because this is a this is operating on this object, and we if we pre press F five, we see that the cylinder is now rotated around the x axis. Uh, alternatively, you could do the y, and you get that. And then if you do, um, and then you can combine them as well, but we won't do that for this operation. So next up is the loop. The next command we're going to use is the for command. So let's get an object to operate on. So I'm going to copy this cylinder down. Let me just double click it there. And let's change the second radius to one so that we have, we'll end up with a cone. And you'll see now, right now it's invisible. So let's move it over so it's easier to see. And we're going to use a translate command to do that. And let's move it over at 15 on the X axis. And so now you see we have our cone. Let's make it 20 so it's just distinct from the other stuff. And now we're going to add the for loop. So the for loop is simply the for command with a variable equal to and what is sort of like a vector but it's not. And it's basically it's the start value, colon, the step value, and the end value. You can also, there are other versions of this, but probably this is the one you'll use the most. And then whatever the for command is operating on is put in curly braces. Now if you only have one child you don't need the curly braces um, but I'm going to include them for now. So as it is this will do nothing because we don't we need to use the I somewhere to change things. So we're going to put the I in the Y variable or, or the Y uh, value for the translate command and then we'll press F5 and now we have 10 cones. So that's the translate command. If you wanted this to start at zero with 10 you could do this. We could do 0 to 90 and that will give us uh, 10 cones starting at 0. So that's the translate command. Next we'll, we'll do compile and export the STL. So the final pieces we need to learn to make a printable model is to compile and export as an STL. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of some pieces. Sorry about that. Let's get uh, my toolbar back. I lost that somehow. All right, so I want to get rid of these cones. So let's get rid of this uh, for loop. And you can disable something by hitting asterisk. And that way you're not deleting your code, but you're removing it from the model. So let's put asterisks in front of the sphere and F5. So this is what's going to print. Uh, the red highlighting has no bearing on the, on the compilation. So I'm going to render this. That's render or F6. And I'm going to press F6. So that's our, our completed rendered object. This is what, we're, what we'd print. So to get that into a format that can print, we're going to click on the STL icon, or alternatively, you can do File, Export as STL. But I'm going to just click the STL icon. It'll ask me where I want to save it, and I'm just going to save it in my uh, file folder there. And now we can open that in another program. So I'm going to open that in Cura. So one more thing I want to show you before we go over to uh, Cura is how to set variables. So I'm going to do 
two variables. I'm going to do my var equals 10, and we'll do my var 2 equals 20. Now, the names can be pretty much whatever you like except reserved values. Like, you can't call it cube, I don't think. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to do a cube, and the cube will be, uh, the x value of the cube will be my var, and then t just 10 all around, send it, and then we'll translate it with my var 2. So we'll do translate, once I learn how to type again. So this translate command will operate on the child cube, the single child cube, and we're going to do my var 2 as the x. Sure, it's exactly the same as the variable, otherwise it won't work, and we can just render that. So you see now we have a cube that's um, in the x direction of, of 20, and let's change this so you can see, let's change its size, so now it change its x size, let's put it y, let's put this in the y as well, and redraw it, so now you see it's bigger, so we did 25, let's do it, make it smaller, 5. So you can see how you can more dynamically change your model by using variables. So I've opened up Cura and I have selected my STL that I created in OpenSCAD and I'm just gonna open it. And there you can see there's the, the STL in, in Cura ready to print. And that's it for today. I hope you have a good time and you can print some stuff out with what I've taught you today and good luck. If you like my channel, make sure you subscribe um, and also click the alarm bell to get notified of additional videos. This video is followed by more detailed uh, versions of each of the objects I covered in that if you want to look through the playlist. And have a great